ladies and gentlemen, she's one of the queens of comedy from South Africa. Please give it up for Tewingi. Show some love, show some Nigerian love. Okay, yeah. Wow. Hello, Nigeria. Wow, so many of you came out to see a comedy show. You are complaining about your current economic situation, but you have money for jokes. I've been very impressed with what I've seen in Lagos. It's, it's very nice, it's very refreshing. I'm from South Africa. And you know our men are lazy. So it's been good for me to see black men wearing suits and going to work. In South Africa, you can only say two things to a black man wearing a suit. It's either rest in peace or may the defendant rise. <laughs> but fortunately, I was raised very well. I come from a very strong Christian background. When I was growing up, my mother told me never to ever marry a man without a professional job. Because the best time to have sex is when your husband is away on a business trip. <laughs> and I'd like to apologize for xenophobia. On behalf of the South African president. I'd like you guys to understand that the president has nothing to do with xenophobia. The word is too big for him to understand what it means. <laughs> he can't even read numbers and you expect him to understand xenophobia. Uh, just like every country, we also have problems in South Africa. I married a white man and it's not my fault. I blame my mother. She told me not to play in the mud. And a lot of my friends like to tell me that I'm a sellout. I'm not. I just prefer my man with a good job and a good credit record. <laughs> and that is hard to find from South African men. And I know that you guys like to complain that South Africans drink a lot. It's also not our fault. I blame the white people. It's so refreshing to be in other African countries where there are not many white people. White people came to South Africa. They found us having a good time and they introduced education. And according to my chemistry teacher, alcohol is a solution. But we are trying, we are trying to live together. It's difficult because black people and white people, we have our differences. And it's not always racism. For example, my mother-in-law, I know she's not racist, she's a good woman. We just don't get along because we're different people. I'm a Libra, she's a bitch. There are many things that they do which I don't understand. For example, our white people work hard, make a lot of money, buy beautiful houses, and when they get time off from work, they go camping. We don't do that. I'm sure if you guys feel like sleeping on the floor, you just visit your cousins in Wari. And I am a mother, 
and it's not easy for me to be a mother because I am a bit too honest. So sometimes I find myself shouting at my son, calling him a son of a bitch, and then I realize I'm the bitch here. <laughs> Which is why I sent my son to school in England. Because as a South African, it's very difficult to tell your 12 year old if he decides not to go to school. What do you say? Son, if you stop going to school, one day you're gonna be a president. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's very nice to see Nigerian men you Nigerian women, you are lucky. Your men are fit, they have good bodies. In South Africa, we have, our men are too fat. Sometimes when I look at some of the naked Zulu men, you don't know whether to throw him a baby shower or to buy him a bra. We are even campaigning. We think our bad, bright prize should have new regulations. Fat men should pay double. Because <laughs> even at toll gates, a truck pays more than a Mini Cooper. <laughs> Do you guys know Kulubuse? President Zuma's son, the fat one. Okay, let's just say if Kulubuse was here tonight, he'd be sitting next to all of us. And then you get a man like Kulubuse asking us for favors that we reserve for men with six packs. Imagine having to give Kulubuse a blow job. It doesn't work because you have to wear a helmet so that his stomach doesn't hurt you. And I love how Nigerian women are so beautiful. We have a problem with our black men in general. You guys like to put us under a lot of pressure and tell us that we look more beautiful with 100% Indian hair. I'm from Durban, capital city of India. And I've never seen a bold Indian woman. So you know where they get her hair from. And I think as black women, we are beautiful in our different shades and different shapes. Which is why I would never waste my money going for surgery in order to improve my looks. I love myself the way God created me. For example, if you can look at me properly, my breasts are not the same size. And I'm okay with that. Because it means I can sleep with men who love big breasts and I can sleep with men who love small breasts. <laughs> if you love big breasts, you play on the left. You love small breasts, you play on the right. <laughs> and that is why I broke up with my last Zulu boyfriend. Because he told me that I would look a lot better if I had 100% Indian hair. And as an honest woman, I told him he would also look a lot better if he had a 100% Nigerian dick. Thank you very much. My name is Tenjiwe.